Hello everyone, I am Mehtap and welcome to our presentation on classroom management. Here is the table of content that you can see the outline of our presentation. And as the first speaker of our group, I will going to talk about what is classroom management and some classroom management areas. What is classroom management? Actually, classroom management refers to the wide variety of skills and techniques that teachers use to keep students organized, orderly, focused, attentive on tasks and academically productive during a class. When classroom management strategies are executed effectively, teachers minimize behaviors that impede learning for both individual students and group of students. And also, they maximize behaviors that facilitate or enhance learning. Classroom management areas. There are six different classroom management areas. Activities, grouping and seating, authority, critical moments, uh, tools and techniques, and working with people. Activities include setting up, giving instructions, monitoring and timing. Setting up activities. Before starting your activity, make sure that you have really thought about what you are going to do. How are you going to set up your activity? How will you lead into it? How will you relate it to your lesson? Or how will you form groupings or studying and so on? So before the activity, you need to be prepared and all the elements should be ready for activity. We said setting up activities. How it's supposed to be. Firstly, you need to explain the activity in graded language. You should give instructions. Then give a very clear model of the activity with student participation, which is demonstration. Then concept check questions. Ask questions to establish whether the key aspects of the activity have been understood. Then activate. Start the activity clearly. Let the responsibility to be active fall on the students. Then monitor students. Observe students carefully to ensure they are on task and to notice areas for development. Then feedback. Conduct the feedback session with the whole groups. And lastly, wrap up. Make, make a closing comment to establish that this phase of the lesson is ending. When it comes to giving instructions. Instructions are a basic part of the teaching process. Giving the right instructions is one of the most difficult and challenging things in uh, managing a successful learning environment. With our instructions, actually, students must understand what teachers want them to do. Since instructions mark the beginning of a new activity, if they are not clear enough, activity will not be carried out successfully. Think about a nice activity. Even a nice activity will be ruined if our instructions are not clear enough. So giving clear instructions are really important to uh, manage a successful classroom environment, actually. Monitoring activities. Monitoring is a classroom management technique loosely defined as listening to learners for their accuracy and fluency, checking to see whether activities are going to plan and students are doing tasks which they are asked to do. Sometimes, in spite of giving clear instructions, students may have difficulties in following them. So at that point, teachers should walk around the classroom, sit with peers or groups, and monitor to can see whether activity is staying on plan or not. So basically, the general uh, purpose of the monitoring activities are listening to ensure that learners are on task, listening for errors in target language, taking opportunities for micro-teaching to individuals or peers, maintaining discipline, assessing both individuals and whole class. Timing activities and the lesson. Uh, since effective timing is one of the essential keys to successful learning, teachers should be aware of using time efficiently in their classes. Thus, they need to be able to gain control over the activities they do, organize the classroom well, plan their lesson carefully, and they should set realistic times for the completion of activities, actually. To keep, to keep students engaged, teachers need to plan for different block of time in the classroom. These include allocated time, which is the total time for teacher instruction and student learning. Then instructional time, the time teachers are actively teaching. Then engage time, the time students are involved in tests on their own. And academic learning time, the time teachers can prove that students learn the content or mastered a particular skill. Grouping and seating. Grouping and seating includes forming groupings, 
arranging and rearranging seating, forming class as a whole group after activities and deciding where you will stand or sit. Forming groupings. Before you start your activity, you need to find or choose most appropriate grouping type. And there are some common types of student grouping in classroom. These are include uh, whole class, which is whole class working together, mingle, which is whole class moving around and mixing together as individuals, then small groups, three to eight people, and pairs and individual working. And in any of your lessons, you may include work that involves a number of these different arrangements. So with the help of this, these varying groupings, your students can enable a variety of uh, different ex different experiences. And also, you shouldn't forget reforming class as a whole group of activities as well. Arranging and rearranging seating. Arranging classrooms layout can make the classroom more attractive place to study and can facilitate learning. So, as we said in forming groupings for each activity you do in class for each lesson, consider what grouping seating arrangements are most appropriate. And when it comes to changing, rearranging the seating, uh, why we are supposed to do this? Because uh, changing uh, or rearranging seating can help students to interact with different students, can make cooperative work easier, or can revitalize for students, even can reduce stress within the classroom. And at the same time, because it is real difficult for students, especially for young learners, to sit still for a long time, you need to include some activities that involve movement as well. Deciding where you will sit, stand or sit. The position of the teacher in the classroom is very important. Where we decide to position ourselves at Various stages of the lesson is important if you take into account the effect it has on our learners. Whether we are standing, seated, or, or crunching in front of the side or behind learners, send out a message with regard to what we want them to do. Our choice will depend on the aim of the activity in progress. And for example, there are times when we will want to be the focus of uh, all of our students or when we will want to be addressing groups, pairs, or individuals in the class. So we will basically adopt different positions according to our activity. And authority. Authority include, includes gathering and holding attention, setting classroom rules, and punishment. Gathering and holding attention. First of all, gathering attention, Teachers should not start a new task or activity without getting the attention of all of the students in class. And teachers can use special different uh, ways to begin a new task, such as making eye contact, using gestures, ringing a bell, dropping their voice, switching lights, clapping hands, and so on. And when it comes to holding attention, uh, if the students get bored, they lose their interest and stop paying attention to the task and the teacher. Therefore, one of the most important aspects is student motivation. To break monotony and attract students' attention, you need to, you have to provide a variety of activities. To can, uh, the activities actually work well are activities such as games, puzzles, songs, basic total physical response activities. And to can hold the attention, teachers have to be flexible and they should be able to move on to the next activity when they see uh, students get bored. Setting classroom rules. Uh, when teachers design classroom rules, they need to consider that rules must be uh, easy to understand and manageable so that students can know what is or what is not acceptable. And setting correct rules help create a predictable atmosphere that maintains classroom decreases disruptions and encourages children to use self-control. So it's suggested that giving the students the opportunity to develop the rules collaboratively with teacher, since students who participate in creating rules tend to understand them better and they are more likely to adopt and follow them. And at the same time, since displaying the rules on the wall or to the board helps students to learn and follow them easily. So presenting the rules visually in the classroom is highly suggested as well. Basically, rules should be limited. Uh, to three six points 
should be in the form of positive statements, should be age appropriate, should be develop, developed collaboratively with students, and should be presented visually. Punishment. It is essential that the teacher show students what will happen if they ignore the rules. In addition, a teacher needs to maintain consistency when dealing with the rules and punishment. Inappropriate behavior should be followed by consequences rather than punishment. And these logical consequences need to be applied fairly and consistently and should be focused on helping students to learn from their own mistakes. And consequences are considered as an and result of a child's inappropriate act. In other words, they should not be viewed as something imposed such as sanctioning, but rather as, a, as an appropriate outcome for an inappropriate act. A consequence should make sense, should be a logical ending for an action. It should be the effect of behaving inappropriately. And thank you for listening. Now, Dila is going to talk about the other three class management area. Hi, my name is Dilara and I will talk about some of the classroom management areas today, like critical moments, tools and techniques, and working with the people. Critical moments are starting the lesson, finishing the lesson, dealing with problems, and appropriate discipline. Starting the lesson. Starting the lesson is a transition period in which both students and teachers enter the classroom and orient themselves to commence in class. Starting the lesson helps set the mood and the tone for the day's work. And also, it's important to be sure to have students' attention before beginning the class. Finishing the lesson. Finishing the lesson properly is effectively wrapping things up in a way that will benefit your students' learning. The cool down clearly shows to them that this is the way that plan for the lesson to end and that you are ending it like that for a reason. Dealing with unexpected problems. Control versus flexibility. Striking a balance and stay focused on what have planned while remain attentive and ready to make adjustments or to relax certain rules if it can contribute to learning. Open versus strict. Creating an welcoming environment where students play an active role in their learning. Organization, interest and teaching rhythm or adaption. Being willing to modify the lesson plan according to the needs of the students. Enforcing strict rules versus being accommodating. Let students know which behaviors are not acceptable in your course. In some teaching contexts, you have no choice but to lay down strict rules for safety reasons. This way, you empower your students and will be able to better cope with challenging situations when they appear as a result. You will never be able to prepare yourself for every possible teaching position, since there is literally no end to the strange things that students can say or do with regard to a class. No matter how well organized you think you are, there are times when all teachers have to manage their ways through unanticipated situations. There is no way to list every unexpected situation. That's why they are called unexpected. In general, the best advice is to always keep a calm and cool head and not to panic. Try to buy yourself some time and come up with a plan, then act on that plan. Whatever you do, choose to do, try to do it confidently. Maintaining appropriate discipline. Discipline is providing an environment in which positive teaching and positive learning can occur simultaneously. Discipline is not controlled from the outside, it's ordered from within. Teachers usually face a lot of challenging and overwhelming situations in the classroom and trying to maintain a certain level of discipline. As part of their job, they need to prepare engaging lessons and understand the needs of individuals and diverse learners. And with a classroom of 20 and 25 students at least, this can amount up by quite a lot of work for the teachers, but if done right, with the correct methodologies, proper order can be achieved in a typical classroom setting. Some of the strategies to handle student discipline situations. Remain calm and composed. When correcting misbehavior, communicate in the most private, respectful and positive manner. Make all discipline decisions after the heat of the moment. Use appropriate humor to de-escalate conflict situations. When you feel as if you or your student is too emotional to handle a particular situation, Suggest postponing the discussion until both are prepared to talk it out. Instead of blaming, use I messages to explain why the behavior was disruptive. Instead of saying you are disruptive, 
Try saying I lost my concentration when you are talking in class. This helps to avoid an angry relationship. Attempt to de-escalate situation by providing distraction. These distractions give people the opportunity to cool off. Use stress management techniques such as deep breathing or repeatedly tensing and relaxing your muscles. Address only student behavior rather than personal traits. A next time message can correct students' behavior without making them feel discouraged. This strategy calls for the teacher to tell students what to do next time without focusing on what was done this time. The check yourself message can remind students to manage themselves responsibly. This involves the teacher telling students to check what they have done, implying that when they do so, they will see what corrections are necessary. This can be used whenever the students become careless. Avoid win-loss conflicts. Emphasize problem solving instead of punishment. Be an attentive listener. Encourage students to talk out feelings and concerns and help them clarify their comments by restating them. Ignore or minimize minor problems instead of disrupting the class. Excellence. The directed question or your proximity will be enough to stop misbehavior. Tools and techniques. Using the class board and other classroom equipments. Using gesture to help clarity of instructions and explanations. Speaking clearly in an appropriate way. To quiet and chatter in class, resist raising your voice, which only works to encourage more noise. Help students familiarize themselves with your nonverbal ways for quieting down the class, which include hand signals, counting down backward from five, until silence is achieved or clapping. Use of silence. When we allow students time to attend to their own thoughts, students can develop a better understanding of themselves and their work. Silence can be used to add a dramatic effect to a lesson, allow students to think at their own pace, promote focus, focused and improved motor control, increase relaxa relaxation and calm, give space for creative, intuitive or re reflective thinking. Read in complexity and quantity of language. Speaking slowly. Speaking more slowly will increase your chances of being understood. Use simpler vocabulary. Use simpler vocabulary for instructions or explanation for better understanding. Use simpler grammatical structures. Use natural English. Avoid making mistakes. A lot of thinking time. Before jumping in and rephrasing the question, remember that students need time to think. Attention! Having a look at the course book will give you an idea of the types of text and what kind of vocabulary your students are likely to be familiar with. Working with the people. Spreading attention evenly. Teacher must show students that they are wanted and needed in the classroom, and their opinions matter. Allow each child to voice their opinions. It is really important as a teacher to evenly distribute our attention to all students. Using intuition to gauge what students are feeling. Intuition helps to respond fast and make split-second decisions. What is intuition? Intuition is going with someone's first instinct and reaching decisions quickly based on automatic cognitive processes. Intuition is born from experience, is the subtle knowing. Eliciting honest feedback from students. Encouraging students' honesty by creating a culture where they feel safe to be honest and the teacher is genuinely curious and respectful. Increasing student engagement. By finding out what learning activities students like the most and the least, about your class, you will get a better design and lessons that really engage them. Preventive discipline. Learning more about each student's experience in your class can go a long way toward improving the relationship you have with them. And that can go a long way toward improving classroom management. Take really listening to students. Many teachers listen to students, really listen, and show students that their teacher has a vested interest in them. It relays the message that what the student has to say is important enough to, that an adult will stop and what they are doing and listen. Listening can also help us better, 
to better understand a student's perspective. Taking it even further, by sitting and actively listening to their reply shows the students you are care about their perspective. Attentive listening can help you proactively understand what is happening in a student's mind to prevent further behavior issues. Listening will help you to more fully understand your students' needs and motivations. Now, Narmin will talk about classroom seating arrangements. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Narmin. Now I will talk about classroom seating arrangements. Sometimes students have to work in groups. Sometimes uh, you give a presentation to class. Every strategy needs an effective and different classroom arrangements. It depends. Now I will show you nine possible classroom seating arrangements uh, which can be useful during the lessons. First one is rows or cones. A traditional classroom is designed with rows of seats, all facing toward the front of the classroom. Uh, this is used most of the time in higher education when students have to listen to their teacher. Here, uh, the teacher can't give any one-on-one -on -one feedback because it's hard to reach students in the middle. There are some pros and cons, of course. It encourages individual work and productivity. It minimizes disruptions and cheating. Uh, it's effective for demonstration and presentations. Uh, but it discourages student-centered discussion and group work. It's easier to lose their focus. It's difficult for teachers to move easily from student to student. The second one is pairs. The seating arrangement is when the two student desks are together and spaced away from other pairs. The tables are placed in well-organized rows but in pairs of two. Uh, pairs allow students to work together and independently. It's more fun way. In this way, uh, students can get their heads together when needed. There are advantages and disadvantages again. Uh, this layout allows teachers uh, to walk around the classroom and monitor all the students so a uh, teacher can see all students clearly uh, and students help and motivate each other. Uh, students have the opportunity to talk to each other so if they get bored it will be noisy too much. Therefore, teacher must keep control of the class. Uh, the third one is horseshoe or U-shape. In a horseshoe setup, desks are placed in a semicircle. The desk face the front of the room and focuses attention to the center of the room. Uh, in this style, uh, the horseshoe is typically used for demonstration or group discussions. Uh, this supports both students to students and teacher to student interactions. Uh, this layout encourages uh, discussion and participation. It makes it easy for teachers to observe all students and give one-on-one -on -one help. It creates a large space for presentation and demonstration. But it may be hard for shy students. It may be difficult for control behaviors. It may not be possible in smaller classrooms because uh, it uses more space than other designs. The fourth one is W shape. When you have more students or a smaller classroom, you can choose for the W shape arrangement. Uh, this allows you to put more students next to each other. It enables students the ability to easily see their classmates and uh, interact with them during discussions. It's uh, suitable for whole class discussions. However, it cannot be enough for small group work, but uh, students can still work in partners with the person beside them if required. It's harder for the teacher to go around in the classroom. One-on-one -on -one support is more or less off the table here. Students in the back might feel a bit left out as well. Fifth one is clusters or groupings or pots. Clusters consist of four or five desks pushed together, so every desk is facing another one. Uh, while working with groups, students get to sit with uh, others all the time. Uh, they get to know each other better and make friends. This will be also good uh, starting at the beginning of the term. Uh, it encourages interaction of all students. It offers safe and comfortable environments for students to share their ideas. 
Students develop some skills such as communication, collaboration, problem solving, and more in these arrangements. But uh, discomfort, however, also lends itself to off-test behavior and a large increase in noise level and distractions. If uh, there are many students, it may also be too noisy to use this layout. It can decrease productivity. It can lead to less individual uh, accountability. The entire workload uh, may be handled by only a single person. It can be harder to assess students' abilities and level of understanding. The sixth one is stadium. In this classroom design, uh, desk or tables are placed in angled rows with desk touching. Uh, this way, students give full attention to the teacher or students at the front of the classroom. Uh, this arrangement also uses less floor space. Uh, it enables the teacher to see what they, every student is doing because uh, draws are angled against a fixed point at the front of the classroom. Uh, it gives all students a clear view of the teacher, but it may place some students too far away from the front of the room, of course, uh, depending on how many rows are used or how wide each row is. Uh, less suitable for classrooms that often require group working. The seventh one is circle or O shape. The O shape layout has the desk in a complete closed circle, so all students, one facing, uh, all students are facing one another. It's ideal for face to face interaction. It's suitable for whole class discussion. It's easy to hear everyone. It's easier to control behaviors of students. Uh, the teacher can stand in the middle of the circle and uh, very easily move from student to student. Uh, but it may uh, be hard for shy students. It requires more space. Uh, it's difficult to implement in small classes. It restricts mobility. Uh, there should be flexible and mobile furniture such as desks on uh, rolling wheels for this arrangement. The eighth one is runway, uh, best used with smaller classes. This setup puts the emphasis on the teacher. Uh, the teacher uses the runway uh, between the two rows of facing desks to conduct the lessons. Uh, this layout is great for discussions and lecture-based classes. When it comes to pros and cons, uh, this layout places on emphasis on the teacher by ensuring all eyes are on the lesson. A receiving arrangement is best suited for classrooms that hold a lot of lectures and class-wide discussions. Uh, but due to the amount of space it takes up in the classroom, uh, this style is not suitable for large class sizes. Large class sizes. This type of grouping can also make group and partner work uh, tricky. The last one is combination. In a combination classroom arrangement, teacher can use the best parts of two or more classroom designs. Uh, the arrangements can be changed on a day-to-day -day, uh, day -day basis or be permanent. Classrooms with different sizes of desks may use this style. Uh, it makes use of whatever desks are available by not requiring specific sizes or dimensions to create a function functional a classroom area. It allows for a flexible design that can facilitate a workshop exercise or have students move, uh, move from one station to another. Uh, but it doesn't give any, uh, every student the same view of the teacher or the same size or shape of workspace. It doesn't allow for uniformity across the class. Uh, when it comes to the classroom interaction, interaction plays an important role in class. Increasing the teacher-student interaction uh, can help students learn faster and more efficiently. To do that, teachers need to create a connection with their, their students and build trust with them, but that can be challenging. Uh, these tips will make it easier for us to increase the interaction in our classes. First one is teaching process language. Uh, this refers to the language that students need to interact. Uh, we can introduce that before starting the task and leave useful phrases on the board so uh, learners can refer to them while speaking. Second one is providing support. Uh, we have to try to provide ideas too. Uh, this can be brainstormed 
uh, before the task and put on the board so that learners have plenty of things to talk about. The third one is giving preparation time. Quite often interaction breaks down because uh, learners have not had time to think about what they want to say and how to say it. The fourth one is providing a supportive atmosphere. Uh, we must give enough uh, praise and feedback on task achievement as well as language use. Varying the interaction and repeating tasks. A uh, teacher can move students around so that they are not always talking to the same partner. Uh, you may ask students to perform the same task a number of times but each time with a different partner. Having different levels of tasks. Uh, we should prepare an easy, medium and difficult version of the same task so students of different levels can interact together at a level appropriate to their language level. Uh, providing a reason to interact, uh, we should provide the learners with a reason to speak and listen. Information gaps activities are good examples of this. Gestures and facial expressions, uh, we should this, we should use these uh, to replace this unnecessary teacher talk. Uh, making pairs and groups, we should make pairs and small groups to maximize opportunities for students to speak. The last one is seating arrangement. Uh, a seating arrangement should be created where the teacher can see all the students and the students can see and interact with each other. Factors preventing learning in classroom. Uh, first one is teacher behavior and personality. Uh, for example, if a student has a negative emotion such as fear or something else, uh, that can be that can negatively affect their attitude toward the subject. If the teacher uh, shows a preference toward certain students or uses humiliating language, that uh, can lower their motivation in education. Sorry. Uh, the second one is teaching methods. Uh, students are more likely to retain their motivation uh, in education if teachers use different teaching methods. Uh, that creates diversity and prevents students from getting bored. A teacher is more likely to meet their needs by applying different teaching methods. Uh, Teacher-centered classrooms. Uh, if the teacher talks too much and the students are not active in the class, uh, it becomes boring after a while. Peer relationships. Uh, problems and conflicts with peers can make students feel less secure about their social status among peers. Uh, it increases their stress levels and lowers motivation in education. Learning environment uh, should be clean, noiseless, bright and airy. Uh, students learn best in a safe, caring and welcoming inclusive environment. Uh, the last one is assessments. Fear of low grades negatively uh, affects the students' learning processes and tries to get high grades for uh, rather than understanding the lesson which uh, quite prevents learning. And now Kudret will talk about preventing disruptions and classroom management strategies. Hello everyone, I am Kudret and today I am going to talk about some basic classroom management strategies and preventing disruptions. Firstly, what is meant by effective classroom management? When we say effective classroom management, for many teachers, an image of a silent environment can come to mind. But an effective classroom management isn't about a no fun or stressful environment. And it doesn't have to be like that. Actually, effective classroom management is a collection of gentle but powerful strategies designed to create an environment that is promotes to learning and enjoying school. It's about relationships and leadership. It's about students behaving and giving their best because they want to, not because they are forced to. And the main aim is to keep students organized, orderly, focused, attentive on task and academically product productive during a class, right? But what happens if a classroom cannot be managed effectively? Effective teaching and learning cannot take place in a poorly managed classroom and disruptions start to occur. And what is disruption in a classroom? 
By disruption, it is referred to something that causes the kind of impact that leads to change. When the issue comes to education, classroom disruption is generally regarded as behavior that affects the conduct of a class. And there are some examples of this behavior, like frequently arriving late to class, continually leaving and re-entering class without permission, talking with others or talking a lot to none in particular, unauthorized use of cell phones, being openly rude or inappropriately critical, threatening or abusive comments, continually interrupting a structure or other students, and daydreaming, sleeping, or, you know, out of seat. And out of seat, what does that mean? You know, sometimes there are students who never sit in their place. They walk around the class and they will want to change their seats constantly, like these things. And what can we do to prevent disruptions in our classes? We should use effective classroom management strategies. In this way, uh, we can reduce the likelihood of classroom disruptions. And so, there are some approaches to keep students focused on learning and to reduce the likelihood of classroom disruptions. These are witness, overlapping, smoothness and momentum in lesson, group alerting, and stimulating seat work. Firstly, what is witness? It can be described as the teacher's awareness of what is going on in all parts of the classroom. It refers to this as having eyes in the back of the head. So please look at the picture carefully. What do you see? Even if teacher doesn't see the class in that moment, she or he should be focused on the class, right? And because students must perceive that the teacher really knows what is going on in the classroom. And when several incidents of misbehavior occur, um, it is important that teachers deal with uh, the most serious incidents first. And there's a suggestion. Teachers should interfere early and quickly in dealing with misbehavior. If teacher failure to do it, it allows the misbehaviors to spread. And if students are off task and fooling around, the teacher needs to send a clear message that communicates to the student that the teacher sees them and they are not working and they need to get started. As a suggestion, you can walk around the classroom and towards back to the wall, especially to see the broader picture and be more aware of what is going on. And please, don't forget, the art of wittedness is broader than just having eyes in the back of your head. Witted teachers are effective because they are aware of every aspect of the classroom at all times, including the students who are being good. Witted teachers might draw attention to a student who is being good so as to create a ripple effect of good behavior in the classroom. If you catch one student being good, then other students will want to be caught being good too. And so, it is important, please don't forget. And overlapping. What is overlapping? Overlapping is attending to two or more events at the same time. Conan found that teachers who are skilled at overlapping also were also more aware of what is going on in the classroom. Students are more likely to stay on task if they know that the teacher is aware of what they are doing and can help them when needed. For example, the teacher can give a student individual feedback and at the same time she can offer a quick word or encouragement to another student. Or, if the teacher is in the middle of a lecture and a student enters the room, the teacher should make eye contact with the student, have an area for the student to turn in work and continue with the lesson. Once the students are doing their work, the teacher can go to the tardy student and tell them what they missed or answer any questions from the homework assigned the night before. Therefore, it is important to prevent disruptions. And momentum and smoothness. Maintaining a brisk pace and giving continuous activity signals or cues. Now, what does that mean? The teacher should make sure that this exercise remains short so students don't get bored. 
A teacher can keep a timer and assign roles to students to keep the students moving. If students are struggling, the teacher can reflect on what they can do to make the lesson more meaningful and easier to understand for their students. When placing students in group work, the teacher can walk around um, facilitating and listening to discussions of other students. The teacher then uh, intervene or take the group to a different track uh, if required. Teacher can stand near attentive students or directing questions to potentially disruptive students. And group alerting. Um, the ability to keep members um, of the class or group paying attention to the task is essential in maintaining an efficient classroom and reducing student misbehavior, right? And effective grouping maximizes active participation and keeps students engaged in learning. But how can we provide group focus in a classroom? Make students aware that they will be graded for their participation and contributions to the group because effective grouping maximizes active participation and keeps students engaged in learning. Therefore, accountability is a powerful, powerful force in keeping students on task. Direct students' attention to the critical cues in the demonstration using questions to check for students' understanding and varying the students who is called uh, upon to give an answer are some ways to focus the class attention. Student involvement is increased and misbehavior reduced when teachers hold the attention of the class. And stimulating seat work. Seat work is the work done at one seat in the class. Teacher can provide seat work activities that offer variety and challenge to reduce the likelihood of classroom disruptions. And there are some basic classroom management strategies. Firstly, hold and communicate um, high behavioral expectations. All students should receive the consistent message that they are expected to attain high standards in their schoolwork. Effective and consistent communication of high expectation helps students develop a healthy self-concept. But how? Be specific in what you expect students to know and be able to do. Create an environment in which there is genuine respect for students and a belief in their capability. And the importance of rules. Effective rules ensure that student energies are appropriately directed towards maximizing positive behaviors. Teachers want their rules to show students both what to do and what not to do. So they have a clear framework of expectations to reference. Therefore, as a teacher, you should establish clear rules and procedures and instruct students in how to follow them. Also, make clear to students the consequences of misbehavior and enforce classroom rules promptly, consistently, and equitably from the very first day of school. And self-discipline. Self-discipline is important, so try to devote time to teaching self-monitoring skills. But why it is important? Because self-discipline is the key to helping kids become responsible adults. Self-discipline helps kids to tolerate the discomfort when needed to reach their long-term goals or choosing to turn off the video game to work on homework, right? It is important to give kids the skills they need to develop. Self-discipline is an opportunity to practice making good choices also. But how can we teach self-discipline to our students? Firstly, please give them structure and explain the reason behind your rules and give consequences, praise good behavior and teach problem-solving skills. And please monitor classroom activities, give students feedback and, reinfor and reinforcement regarding their behavior. And Create opportunities for students to experience success in their learning and social behavior, particularly those with behavioral problems. It will reduce the probability of disruptions and all students are going to engage in your lesson. And humor.
Humor is important to reduce classroom tension and stimulate student interest, so please make use of when suitable. And work to help students who seem to lack a sense of personal efficacy to achieve an internal locus of control. Actually, teachers can boost self-efficacy with credible communication and feedback to guide students through the task or motivate them to make their best effort. Setting short-term goals and helping students to achieve them one by one. A great way to endorse self-efficacy in the classroom is by creating a stress-free, conducive learning atmosphere. An interactive lesson, a high energy and non-judgmental assessment or an engaging group activity can help in making the learning environment more comfortable. And please remove distracting materials from view when instruction is in progress, such as personal devices, food, um, athletic equipment, and art materials. And guys, these are our references. And thank you for listening to us. Take care of yourself.